Well, it's official. We now know the price of the Xbox Series X. We've already known the price of the Xbox Series S. It got leaked and then Microsoft confirmed it. We know the release date. We have all the details, or at least as many details as Microsoft is willing to give us, um, what to expect from these platforms, how you can buy them, where you can buy them, all that jazz. Uh, in fact, you know what, if you want to pre-order one, maybe I'll have a link down in the description, assuming there are some Amazon links uh, available to pre-order. Because now that usually when the price and the release, release date is announced, that's the same day you can pre-order. All right. So let's get into this. Um, I have to remind you of two giveaways we have first. All right. Before we can talk about this news, because these giveaways are huge. I have six winners this, this month, including someone who's going to win a Switch Lite. Pretty crazy. So we have two separate giveaways with three winners each. The first one's for a Switch Lite with two second place winners, each winning a game of choice for Nintendo Switch. Uh, in order to enter that giveaway, go down to the description. There's multiple ways from subscribing to the channel, hitting the bell icon, joining our Discord server, following on Twitter, all that jazz. Uh, be sure to check out all that stuff. Details are in the description. Also down there is a link to gleam.io, which will enter you into our giveaway for three copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. That's right. We'll have three winners for that giveaway as well. Also, a way to enter both giveaways and every giveaway moving forward with 15 extra entries will be through Patreon at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For as little as $1 a month, you get 15 entries automatically into every giveaway we do. All right. Let's get into the news. As you see here, I'm on Microsoft's uh, Xbox page. They actually directly linked this off Twitter. They announced this less than an hour ago. Xbox Series S and the Xbox Series X launched November 10th, starting at $24.99 a month with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and EA Play. So they're talking about their uh, whatever. You know what? Let's just read it because they're going to explain this better than me. Uh, now with more... Uh, now more than ever, gaming plays an important role in our lives. As one of the greatest forms of creative expression, gaming sparks in our imagination and connects us to new worlds and stories and our friends. On November 10th, a new generation of console gaming begins. So there you go. There's the launch date, November 10th. That's when our vision becomes reality with the most uh, performant, immersive... Is that supposed to be... I don't even know if that's a word. All right. The most performant, immersive, and compatible next generation console gaming experiences. And the freedom to play your games with your friends anytime, anywhere. That's xCloud. Uh, to empower you more than ever to jump into the next generation of gaming, today we confirmed Xbox Series X, our most powerful console ever made, and Xbox Series S next generation performance in our smallest console ever built at a more affordable price. Launch globally November 10th. Pre-orders start September 22nd. So there you go. September 22nd is when you can pre-order hit the f5 refreshes to get those pre-orders in i know i'll be getting my pre-order in as, as quickly as possible um, the expansion of all uh, xbox all access to 12 countries offering you a next generation xbox and 24 months of xbox game pass ultimate starting at 24.99 a month with no upfront cost so that's the the, the ability to buy these platforms for cheap and, and kind of finance them over time EA Play comes to Xbox Game Pass at no additional cost. EA Play is no longer going to be a separate service. It'll be part of Game Pass. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, bringing the next generation of gaming to everyone on day one. We believe that access to the next generation should be available to everyone, and we know that price is an important factor for many of our fans. To complement the Xbox Series X and invite more players into the next generation sooner, we built the Xbox Series S, an all-digital next-gen console designed to deliver everything that is core to next generation gaming. Faster load times, higher frame rates, and richer, more dynamic worlds in our smallest, sleekest Xbox ever. Developing two consoles in parallel from the beginning enable us to deliver the most powerful console ever in Xbox Series X and make next-gen gaming available and affordable to more players on day one with the Series S. Empowering you with freedom and choice is core to everything we do at Xbox. In addition to traditional option of purchasing a new generation Xbox Series X and S at $499. That is the estimated retail price, so suggested retail price for the Xbox Series X, $499. Uh, we're expanding our Xbox All Access program to 12 countries this holiday with more to come in 2021. Whether you're upgrading to the newest consoles or joining the Xbox family for the first time, Xbox All Access is the easiest way to get the best of Xbox. Xbox All Access provides an Xbox Series X or Series S along with 24 months of the full Xbox Game Pass Ultimate experience in total. That means you get access to a next generation Xbox console of your choice, the S or X, over 100 high quality games to play on console including next-gen optimized games, over 100 high-quality games to play on PC because that's just part of Game Pass, an EA Play membership to play more than 60 of EA's biggest and best console and PC games, and over 100 games you can play from the cloud. <clears throat> X Cloud. That's 
all with no upfront costs and a low monthly price. Xbox Series S will be available starting at $24.99 a month for 24 months, and the Xbox Series X will be available starting from $34.99 a month for 24 months. Those were rumored prices. Now they've been confirmed. The Ultimate Gaming membership goes beyond the console and keeps getting better. With the Xbox Game Pass community now over 10 million players, we know how critical it is that your friends can easily access and play the same games as you. And you've pushed us to make Xbox Game Pass the only membership with access to more than 100 games on your console, PC, and mobile. Currently, that, that is true. To provide even more value, we are teaming up with Electronic Arts to provide Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and PC members with EA Play. Ooh, including PC members. That's huge because I, I do I do play some EA games on PC. I like that. Um, at no additional cost starting this holiday. This means Ultimate members can enjoy EA Play on Xbox One, Series X, Series S, and Windows 10 PC users. And Xbox Game Pass for PC members get EA Play on Windows 10. In addition to the 100 plus games in the Xbox library, we know about the 60 EA games. You get to play games like FIFA 20, Titanfall 2, Need for Speed, as well as titles from some of EA's more popular franchises, Battlefield, Mass Effect, Skate, The Sims, etc. Um, the best place to play the biggest games when Xbox Series X and Series S launch this November it will be heralded a new generation of gaming experiences the optimized games for Xbox Series X and Series S coming this year are built to take full advantage of our fastest consoles ever this is important so we know some of the games available even though they're not exclusive uh, looks like the games we're talking about here are Gears Tactics Tetris Effect Connected uh, Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Valhalla which is a new game this year as well as Watch Dogs Legion all going to be taking advantage of the Xbox Series X again third party games but it's nice to know um, you know let me see. Uh, Xbox Series S is designed around the same technology that will make these games and so many others look and feel incredible. And speaking to game developers, we've identified the areas that are most difficult to scale effectively, including the CPU and I.O., and made it easy to include Xbox Series S for developers who are targeting their experience for Xbox Series X. So it sounds like they took the S and they made it possible to just play the games that you develop for Series X just at a lower resolution. That seems to be... The thing, like, you don't really have to change much. It's just lower the resolution. But let's see. Powered by the Xbox Velocity Architecture. You can expect the same benefits from Xbox Series X, such as faster load times and quick resume. Xbox Series S also supports all the same next-gen features, including HDMI 2.1, frame rates up to 120 FPS, DirectX ray tracing, and variable rate shading. It will also support spatial sound, including Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision via streaming media apps like Disney+, Plus, Vudu, uh, Netflix at launch. Plus, Dolby Vision support for gaming will come first to our next-gen consoles in 2021 so that's more of a sound sound experience most of us aren't going to care about that but there are some people that have the right sound setups for that so that, that's going to be pretty cool when available uh, the new xbox consoles are also the only next generation backwards compatible consoles you see microsoft throwing out there the only because technically uh playstation 5 is not fully backwards compatible let alone with every generation but it does allow you to play thousands of games from four generations better than ever before and empower you to play with friends wherever you want across your console, PC, and mobile device. Um, the best generation of gaming yet. Gaming has evolved uh, the last decade to make it easier, simpler, and more affordable to any player to make that first connection with a new world, a new story, or a new friend. With a family of next-gen Xbox consoles, even greater variety and value with Xbox Game Pass expansion and all access, all access, a bunch of marketing mumbo-jumbo. In other words, Xbox Series X has thrown down the gauntlet. Microsoft has now th tossed it to Sony and said, all right, your turn. Now, Sony has been doing a really good job themselves. Let's not pretend they haven't done a great job hyping the PlayStation 5. See, the PlayStation 5 has been hyping itself out with games. Spider-Man Miles Morales, come get it for this come get it for that microsoft has not impressed people with their exclusive games yet at least not visually i think they have some very interesting games in development uh but none of them have looked like you know something that pushes the real power of the xbox series x to prove it's more powerful even though on paper it is so we'll have to wait and see uh what that looks like and maybe it'll it'll come from the third parties you know when digital founder gets their hands on the playstation 5 version of assassin's creed valhalla versus the xbox series x you might maybe see some like noticeable differences and that's where you know microsoft start flexing its muscles and being like yeah dude third party games best on xbox series x uh, so we'll see but it's pretty exciting. I, I like their uh, little, you know, pass they do to, to 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 get the systems cheaper if you have, you know, a good enough credit rating, all that jazz. I really like uh, what Microsoft's doing here to make their system as easy to get as possible. The four ninety nine price literally falls in line with what they launched the Xbox. Uh, one x at 
Uh, so that just makes a lot of sense to me. I, I think in general, this is probably what was expected, especially after the Series S. There was some people thinking, oh man, is Microsoft going to be so bold to go 399? Uh, no. <laughs> now, obviously, is Sony going to be so bold to go 399? Because if Sony goes 399, Microsoft's in trouble. Microsoft's already in trouble because they haven't shown enough games, I think, to impress people, especially for launch, especially with Halo Infinite delayed. But, but... Microsoft's been very upfront about their system, very user-friendly, fully backwards compatible, uh, cheap to get. They offer a cheap option, which is, you know, yes, I know that there is an all digital version of the PlayStation 5, but it's the same power from what we know. From what we know, it's the same power. So because of that, is it going to hit 299 or is it more likely that that system is going to be 499 and then, you know, the uh, one with the disc will be 599? Or it'd be, I don't know. Like, I don't know what, what price points, you know, PlayStation's looking at. Reportedly, it's about 450 bucks to make a PlayStation 5. That suggests 499 minimum, but then the all digital version, does that just removing the disc player make them able to go 399? I, it, again, Microsoft's gone first this entire generation. They're continuing to go first. They were the first to reveal release date and price. Um, Good luck getting your hands on one. Remember, if we do hit 50,000 subscribers, by the way, this month, I haven't mentioned this in a while. If we hit 50K, not this month, but before November 1st of 2020, I'm giving away an Xbox Series X, a PlayStation 5, or a Nintendo Switch, like an, like a normal Switch. So, uh, yeah, this is this is intense. This is really intense. I mean, heck, if you want a Series S instead, that's fine too. But um, I have to decide what I'm going to pick up. I have a 4K TV. And there's part of me that really wants the Xbox Series X, but I, I need to see some presentations on this because I'm curious if performance levels between the S and the X are the same, but the difference is simply what resolution it outputs at and obviously physical versus digital media. Uh, it's going to make me really wonder which one I should get because you got to remember, there's not a huge advantage to physical media on uh, PlayStation or Xbox because you have to install the game anyways. So it's going to take up full space on the hard drive regardless. It just needs a disc to confirm, you know, you own the game. So I, you know, I mean, the disc player obviously has other purposes. You can do 4K Blu-ray, but I don't know. Like, I don't really care as much about that. So, you know, the S is looking a little appealing to me. A little bit appealing. If, if. It, you honestly get the same performance, the same visuals. It just happens to be at 1080p or 1440p. If it's at 1080p or 1440p, but it's literally the same frame rates, same everything else as with the Xbox Series X, there's nothing cut out of it. I mean, most people, I think, will be okay with that. I mean, that's like a Nintendo Wii situation where it's like, yeah, most people don't even have, you know, necessarily 4K TVs everywhere, even though 4K TVs are cheap. There's plenty of people walking 1080p that'll be totally fine with a, a, a series x I, even if it all puts a 440p or 1440p they might be fine with it on 4k so um interesting strategy for microsoft very very interesting different from what sony's doing um so we'll see i i i kind of like it i kind of like it's just options oh look at this hold on hold on we have, we have some more we could check out here so we've already seen the inside the inside of a of a series x but what about this what about the inside of a series s let's look at this quick it says download assets. So let's let's look at this asset here. Let me let me let me bring this over here and, and show you guys what's happening. All right, so come on. Come on, come on, you know you want to. Maybe you don't. All right. Uh, so here's what the inside of the S looks like. So if we look at this, uh, you got the the outside shell, uh, then you got the the metal the metal support that things are kind of you know encased in uh then you got the giant cooling fan we always knew this was going to be a giant cooling fan grade so giant cooling fan look at those look at that fin stack look okay so this is the power supply here that's the power supply look at that fin stack that is a massive fin stack holy crud that is huge man are they are they serious about cooling so i'm curious what this chip is here so here this has got to be the cpu i would assume is this well? What's this chip then? Is that just Wi-Fi six? Is that uh, GP? No, oh, can't be a separate GPU. This got to be APU because this is where all the cooling's at. There's not like any cooling here. So what is that chip there? That like that looks. This chip looks like a standard CPU. Like that looks like a standard CPU. I. But that can't be it. I mean, you can see all the RAM around the system here. There's the RAM. Very interesting. Microsoft's just very upfront. We still haven't seen the inside of a PlayStation 5, and now we've seen the inside of a Series S and a Series X. That's pretty crazy. All right, folks. 
<laughs> That's all I got for you, man. I, dude, next gen's exciting. I'm always excited about new hardware, man. I'm such a techie. I know this isn't Nintendo stuff, and that's fine. And I'll talk about the PlayStation 5 when this kind of stuff comes out, too. But, man, this is cool. I, I love talking next gen. All right, folks, I'll catch you in the next video.